Greetings and welcome, friends. Mr. Waddy and his algebra buddies hanging out today, talking about solving systems by substitution, a very accurate method uh, when graphing will uh, be a little less efficient. So let's see, step one in substitution is solve one of the equations for one of its variables. Uh, I'm doing problem E. This is actually from like some big ideas homework assignment called puzzle time. Uh, what is it? Probably 5.2. 5.2. So, uh, I'm going to solve, when looking at these, uh, I'm going to solve this one for, for x. Uh, and dividing by 7, I'm not f afraid of. Actually, I just realized this is actually more like step 2 combined. This is kind of like both of these combined. But that's not as important. Uh, 7x equals negative 35. So, if I want to solve that for x, I would divide both sides by 7. And... I get x equals negative 5. And hey, I'm actually halfway there. <coughs> now what? All right, my student's telling me I'm going to plug negative 5 in for the other equation's x, as in the equation I did not already solve. Uh, so this is kind of my step three, because this problem ended up reducing itself to a lot easier real quick. So, All right, so notice I no longer have the x there. I've replaced it with negative five. I made a trade Z on that. <coughs> negative eight times negative five is positive 40 is what my student's telling me. Which, by the way, you guys should go check out Jake Math on YouTube. He'll show you how to do these types of problems. Racked by 40. I'm liking this. 90 is how you pronounce that. <laughs> Negative 36. Yeah, because it's being multiplied, so I divide and I get... Y equals negative 4. Uh, and if I wanted, I could think about that as an ordered pair, negative 5, comma, negative 4. That represents the common value of x and y that make both of those equations true at the same time. It is one of infinitely many points in which that is the case. All right, I'm going to cruise through these next ones uh, some, some still writing it down. I'll give it a moment. How you doing today, internet friends? Are you liking, are you liking substitution? Comment below. What's your favorite method for solving systems? Is it graphing? Is it substitution? Is it the yet to be introduced elimination method? Or perhaps in algebra two, you've been introduced to matrices as a means of solving system. Yeah, there we go. So, <coughs> uh, Gotta, uh, gotta keep going. There we go. Uh, question G. Here we go. This is one that uh, was a request from the studio audience. They were saying, Mr. Wadi, could you give us a problem in which it's not yet solved for Y or X? Although this one actually is going to, again, be a one and two kind of combined. Uh, because notice that this equation has no Y in it. It's as if the Y had already been substituted out of the problem, right? So Benjamin's writing this down. He's definitely not playing 2048. Uh, so he's, uh, he's going to be solving this equation for X. He's got X plus 10 equals 11 Zs. Uh, let's uh, solve for X, subtract 10 both sides. I'm going to through this. X equals Uno. And if that's what X equals to, let's plug it in the other equation using some substituting. Uh, right there, good. I'm quite proud of that arrow. I was a little worried, but no, it worked out just fine. Uh, so I'm gonna have 13 times something minus 6y equals negative cinco. And instead of x, yeah, throw a one in there. So notice the benefit of this equation is it now only has one kind of variable, just y's. And I know how to solve equations that have just one type of variable in it. 
back from my chapter one skills, go look at some of the previous Wadi Math videos if you need to learn how to solve equations with one variable. Whoa, whoa, we're getting Jacob, Jake tag team. Jake and Jacob. All right, because this is a positive 13. That minus sign is applying to this term here. Uh, so I like it. Subtract 13. Yep, both sides of that equal sign. I'm liking it. That's all right. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Uh, then I add add six. Ooh, that minus sign is not what's going on with the y. It's being multiplied by negative six. The inverse, of course, being a division. And I get y equals negative over negative is positive. That's positive three. And uh, notice I made sure to remember I flipped my equal sign when I divided by a negative. Uh, so the solution is one comma race. Well done. Well done. Let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing that down. Internet friends, I give my students the XP uh, when, they, when they help me out with some problems here. But I'm going to do that later. Uh, little shout out to Classcraft, a little app made by Canada that uh, allows me to level up my students in class. It's been going pretty good so far. But I, I'm afraid telling you uh, about this, what if like I decide not to run it next year for some reason, and then, and then my students next year will be jealous, like, why didn't I get experience points? Uh, so here we go. Another one. Here's a boss fight problem. This question will be of the caliber of today's mini quiz that you will be doing. So, uh, meh, yeah. Uh, so question one. Solve one of the equations for one of its variables. All right. <coughs> Not yet. Now, of these four variables, one, two, three, four, which one is a weak spot, so to say, that I should solve for? Disagree. Which variable should I solve for? The first equation's x? The first equation's y? The second equation's y? Why do you like that y? Yeah, it's got no protection. There's not a, a coefficient there protecting it. You said two, I thought. All right, no worries. So 2x minus y equals 6. And uh, let's solve for that y. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I will get the opposite of y equals negative 2x plus 6. Why didn't I combine these? Those are not like terms, right? Yeah, one's got one is counting x's, the other is counting like numbers. Uh ooh. How could I get y by itself here? Add I could add y, uh and then I'd have to move these two to the other side. Watch this. Y is technically being multiplied by negative 1. I could divide everybody by negative 1. I could also just multiply both sides by negative 1. That'll change the sign. Or I could just say... Or I could just say opposite both sides. I, that's a perfectly fine move. So that's positive Y, positive 2X, and minus 6. I just opposite, opposite, opposite. All right, so that's step one. Yeah. Which equation's y? I always got to plug it into the other equations, right? Other equation. Okay? All right. You guys writing this down if you need it, right, right? I like it. So, so watch this. Here we go. I'm going to write this whole thing like so. 7x minus 3 times something equals 17. I'm replacing the y completely with 2x minus 6. So that is the substitution moment that is occurring here. Okay? 
Uh, and now this equation, although uglier than either of the original, is actually better because it only has one kind of variable within it. All right, here let's let's slow down. Let's slow down for our friends. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. Here, I'm going to pause here for a moment for my students writing it down because I want to make sure they're also understanding what they're writing down and not just copying a series of symbols and numbers and letters, right? I mean, like, we could all copy down the stuff on the Rosetta Stone but then not know anything about what it means. All right. Ben, do you agree with him? Yeah? All right. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you some more XP in a minute there, Jake Math. But uh, I'm going to have you pause from sharing anymore just because I want to make sure that the learning for everyone else is being exposed. I think you've got it. I think you've got it. Let's, well, let's, yeah, let's participate here. So 7x minus 6x is 1x. Yeah, let's have you jump in this. Yeah, tell me what you think. Yep. Uh, oh, sorry, just over here? Both? Oh, okay. Both sides of the, the equal sign. I like that. Yep. So th those will cancel out. X equals negative one. I agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm donezos. Right. All right, so I... Gave you another another tick mark for some XP. Uh, someone else help me with step three. Uh oh, oh, down. I I want them to think about it though. I need sometimes the struggle is where we learn. You know, it's like if you're benching two hundred pounds earlier this week. It's not necessarily always helpful if someone was there, like, lifting the other side of the bar for you. You know, like, you're not actually getting stronger from that experience. It's the struggle that makes us stronger. So, yeah. No, no, no. I want to see someone else get stronger on this problem. Someone else, what's, uh, what's my step three? What do I put in this? I'm going to use that, but what am I putting in it? Where what 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 am I doing? Tell me before you before you tell me what I'm writing, tell me what I'm doing. Bringing the negative 1 all right, cool, cool, cool. I appreciate it. I'm going to give both of you guys some on that, right? You're on, the, you're on the same team. Don't be upset that you're both getting XP. So Y equals 2, and instead of X, I'm plugging in the negative 1. And always plug it in with parentheses, because if you didn't, it might look like 2 minus 1 and not 2 times negative 1s. Yeah. You can plug it in up here or there. I wouldn't mark you wrong on a mini quiz or a test. It's just a little bit more work sometimes. Okay, let's see. So I got negative one comma negative eight. Yeah. <coughs> All right, yeah, yeah. If, if you plugged it in here, you'd find that you would have been repeating a lot of these same steps uh, that we'd already done. So that's, that's the only thing. All right, here we go. I'm going to uh, do this problem completely by myself, and I'm going to explain everything. So just pay, pay attention to all these steps, and uh, it'll be good. So uh, when I define my variables for a word problem, I typically find them, like most of the time, 95% of the time, my variables will be 
the question being asked, okay? So it says, how many pull-ups and push-ups were required in one minute? So X equals, uh, this isn't the number of calories burned per pull-up. This isn't the number of hands or arms that were used per pull-up. It is the how many, right? So I'm describing the number of pull-ups. All right, would be one variable. And that's just a number of pull-ups is my units. Uh, and Y equals the number of push-ups. All right, so there's my variables. And now what I'm going to try to do is read through this problem and look for some facts to combine with my variables to write some equations. So let's see. The physical education instructor asks, asks each student to do a total of 36 pull-ups and push-ups in one minute. I have a feeling that one isn't actually necessary because it was kind of eliminated by that. Okay? Uh, so yeah, what are our thoughts? I like it, yeah. So the number of pull-ups plus the number of push-ups is going to equal 36. So this equation is measuring kind of like a quantity, right? Or, or the total, you could think about it, right? Or it's a, a kind of how many sort of equation, okay? Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find another fact. It says the instructor wants students to do eight times as many push-ups as pull-ups. So the number of pull-ups, x, which, which one am I multiplying by 8? Now, it says 8 times as many push-ups, which makes me feel like, oh, wait a minute, push-ups. I could have written it the other way around. So, well, wait, wait, number of push-ups was Y, so Y is going to equal some number of X, but where am I putting the 8? We're getting some disagreement here. Now, let me explain. Uh, which number is going to be bigger? Well, it says that the number of push-ups is going to be 8 times as many as pull-ups. So y is bigger, if y is bigger, and I multiply it by 8 in order to get it to equal x, that means y would have been smaller. But if I multiply x times 8 to barely get it equal to y, that means x would have been the smaller one. All right. So, so sometimes the language here, 8 times as many push-ups, makes me think that I'd be multiplying y by 8 when in fact it's the other way around. It's, it's a little bit tricky to do sometimes. All right, uh, I think for the sake of time, uh, this video has gotten long enough. Uh, I've got the two equations. You would then solve by substitution from here. Uh, and I think I might even have another video that shows you how to do this entire problem. So thanks for watching, Internet friends. Have a great day.